guess that's not my talk. So today I'm going to talk about carbohydrates, cancer, and vaccines. And probably your first response is, what do these three topics have in common? And I hope that by the end of my presentation, I have convinced you that they have very much in common and may perhaps offer a cure for cancer. So cancer needs very little introduction. And I'm sure that everyone in this audience has had either a family member or a friend who has been struck by this terrible disease. Fundamentally, cancer is a disease where cells start to, start to divide in an uncontrollable manner, resulting in tumors. At one point, these tumors move to other parts of the body, causing metastasis, which often lead to cancer. If we can catch cancer early, the patient may be cured. When it has metastasized, at best, chemotherapeutic drugs can extend life. That brings me to vaccines. Vaccines have saved millions of lives by preventing infectious diseases such as the measles, pneumonia, and the flu. Most vaccines are composed of either a killed or attenuated microbe, a pathogen, or just a small part of a pathogen, such as a cell surface protein. When we are being immunized with such a vaccine, the immune system is activated and it leads to the production of antibodies and cytotoxic T lymphocytes. These cells and antibodies can bind with high specificity to the pathogen, leading to its killing and elimination from the body. So when we are infected by a pathogen, uh, such as the flu virus, we have already these cells and antibodies in our bloodstream. They bind immediately to the pathogen, kill it, and as a result, we don't get sick. So the vaccines that we know today are vaccines that prevent diseases. But scientists are developing a new type of vaccine that are called therapeutic vaccines. And as the name implies, these vaccines actually cure diseases. And the types of diseases that we hope to cure include addiction, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer. So how do these vaccines work? And let me take addiction as an example, because it's highly relevant. So if someone smokes, nicotine comes into the bloodstream, causing all type of addictive effects. So if we could train the immune system to make antibodies that bind with high selectivity to nicotine, upon smoking, nicotine will be captured by these antibodies. It can't travel to the brain doesn't cause any effects, and over time, the patient should be relieved of addiction. And this may also apply to cancer. So most cancer cells have molecules on the cell surface that makes them migrate to other parts of the body. So if we could train our immune system to make antibodies and cytotoxic T lymphocytes that very specifically bind to these molecules, we may, with very high selectivity, target those cancer cells, kill them, and cure the patient in a mild manner. Well, that brings me to carbohydrates. When you think about carbohydrates, probably you think about food, unhealthy food, starchy food, food that perhaps can cause cancer. That are not the types of carbohydrates I'm going to talk about. Basically, if you take a cell from your body, every cell in your body, and you look to the outside, what you observe are mainly complex carbohydrates. Basically, every protein on your cell surface is modified by a highly complex carbohydrate, shown on the slide. And these carbohydrates are involved in a wide range of biological processes, including cell migration. So during tumor formation, what often happens is that the cell surface carbohydrates change. It makes the cell mobile. It causes metastasis and the patient is in trouble. And that is shown on this slide. So on healthy cells, there are proteins indicated by uh, the peptide repeating units that are decorated by complex carbohydrates. And these carbohydrates are basically the arms of the cell that keep the cell in place. So during tumor formation, many, many different types of tumors, 
these carbohydrates change in structure. They become truncated, very simple in structure. Basically, you chop, up, chop off the arms of the cells. It can't stay in place. The cell migrates, and actually it causes metastasis, and the patient is in trouble. So we have known for more than 20 years that a small number of cancer patients makes natural immunity against these truncated, bad carbohydrates. And if we look to the clinical outcome of these patients, it's very much improved. It looks like that their immune system keeps the cancer at bay. But it's only a small percentage of cancer patients. So, if we could immunize a cancer patient with a vaccine that induced immunity against these bad carbohydrates, perhaps we could have a cure for cancer. That sounds great, okay? But reality is different. You know, our immune system doesn't like to go after what is cell. Right? Our immune system goes after pathogens, what is foreign. And even if these carbohydrates are bad, they are still cells. So we need to find a way to trick our immune system to go after bad carbohydrates. And I could talk for hours about this, but I'm going to summarize it just in a few minutes. So what we did is we looked at the immune system, looked how it worked. And what we did is we exploit the power of organic chemistry. Can we design and chemically synthesize a molecule that tricks our immune system to fight these bad carbohydrates? And the molecule that we designed is composed of a small piece of peptide with a truncated carbohydrate that is found on cancer cells. It has another piece, a small piece of peptide, that is found on poliovirus and can activate T cells. It has another piece shown in black. It's a lipid found on E. coli, and it tells our body, you are under attack, start fighting back. And what we found, you know, what we thought, if we put these mole huh, molecules together in a big construct, we may be able to activate our immune system and fight these bad carbohydrates. Well, the next challenge that we had is, can we put this molecule together? And after a lot of experimentation, we found a way to make these molecules. Does it work? So what we did is we took a mouse, and this mouse is humanized. It makes proteins and carbohydrates that are human, like us. Okay? We immunize the mouse with the vaccine. At one point, it's challenged with tumor cells. We wait for a little while, and we ask, does the tumor get smaller? Do we make antibodies? Can these antibodies kill cancer cells? Do we make cytotoxic T lymphocytes? And again, can these cells kill tumor cells? And after changing the structure of the molecule, optimize it, we are now able to cure a mouse from breast cancer. That's a great result as an academic working in a laboratory. But now you have to translate mouse work to humans. And that's a big, big step. So we have started working with Mayo Clinic to design a clinical trial. And we're going to focus on breast cancer patients. And there is a group of breast cancer patients called triple negative. This is a group of patients for which there is really no good therapy. And what the clinicians hope to do is that these patients are going to be treated by surgery, radiation, some classical chemotherapy, for a while they are fine. But we know that 40% of them will relapse. And often, it's a metastatic cancer then, and the patient dies. So what we hope is by giving the patient a jab with his vaccine, we will activate the immune system. The immune system will find every cancer cell left behind in the body of the patient, and in that way, cure the patient properly. Well, these bad carbohydrates are found on many different types of cancer, colon, breast, pancreas, uh, colon, and even lung. So we hope that in the long run, we may have a vaccine that can be used for many different cancers. So you may ask yourself how a chemist from the Netherlands ended up in Georgia working on cancer vaccines. And you may like to know that at the University of Georgia, there is a large institute, the Complex Carbohydrate Research Center, that deals with research 
on carbohydrates and health and disease. So 13 years ago, I was working in England. I was asked to give a seminar at this institute. You know, that's what academics do, go to places and tell about their work. <laughs> it's actually not a bad life. Um, <laughs> so over a very nice meal and a glass of wine, uh, we were talking and the director of the institute asked me, what would it take to get you here? I thought he was joking. So I scratched my head and said, well, if you can do this, 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 and I mentioned a big number, I might come. <laughs> I went home, didn't think much of it. Two weeks later, this really impressed me. He called me up and said, all taken care of. And my wife and I had a shock, you know. This, this wasn't for real. Uh, <laughs> and here is, I think, where taking opportunities come in. I never imagined working in the United States as a scientist working on cancer vaccines, but there was this opportunity. We had to take a gamble. You know, I had a lab in England, and with my team of 12 students and postdoc, we moved over the pond to Athens, Georgia, and started our research over here. I was working on microbial vaccines, trying to make better vaccines. I'm a chemist. I like to build molecules. And at the Complex Carbohydrate Research Center, there was a lot of research taking place on cancer. Huh? Can we use these carbohydrates as early diagnostics? So I thought, you know, I, I had this idea. Can we put these two thoughts together? Chemical vaccines, tricking the immune system, and cancer. I found a number of wonderful collaborators, and that's where we are today. We can cure a mouse, and we hope that we can move on to bigger and better things. Thank you.